right, so when you think of India's Defense Research and Development Organization, or DRDO, what's the first thing that comes to mind? For most of us, it's probably missiles, right? But their latest test, well, it's about something completely different. It's about a leap of faith, an incredible piece of technology, and really the future of special forces. And it all kicks off with one number that changes pretty much everything. So let's just try to wrap our heads around this number for a second. 32,000 feet. That's almost 10 kilometers straight up into the sky. I mean, this isn't just high. This is where commercial jets cruise. It's a place where the air is thin, the temperatures are freezing, and it's so high up you can actually start to see the curvature of the Earth. It's intense. So that begs the question, right? What in the world does it take to jump from the very edge of our breathable atmosphere? Not just the human courage, which is insane, but the technological genius behind it. The answer is honestly redefining what's possible in modern warfare. Okay, let's start with the event itself. This wasn't just a routine drill. This was a historic test jump that really pushed the boundaries for India's military. This was not just any jump. We're talking about the very first successful test of a brand new combat parachute system developed entirely in India. And it was pulled off flawlessly by Indian Air Force test jumpers from that staggering 32,000 foot ceiling. This is a massive, massive milestone for India's domestic tech. And you know, we absolutely have to talk about the guys who actually took this leap. Wing Commander Vishal Lakes and Warrant Officers RJ Singh and Vivek Tavari. These aren't just names on a slide. These are professionals who put their complete trust in a system being pushed to its absolute limit for the very first time. That's just nerves of steel. Truly incredible. So how is a jump like this even possible? I mean, this isn't just about having a better parachute. It's a fully integrated system designed for survival and, more importantly, for infiltration. Let's break down the tech. Okay, so the heart of this whole thing is a technique called HAHO. That stands for High Altitude, High Opening. Now, unlike a regular skydive where you free fall for a long time, in a HAHO jump, you pop the chute almost immediately after leaving the plane. And why would you do that? Simple. It turns the soldier into a human glider. And this system is so much more than just the parachute itself. It's a whole suite of interconnected tech. You've got DRDO's labs in Agra and Bangalore working together, one building the advanced parachute, the other creating the life support that's absolutely critical to survive that hostile environment. We're talking oxygen, insulated gear, the works. The system also uses India's own NAVIC navigation system, which is a huge deal because it can't be jammed like GPS. And on top of all that, it's incredibly maneuverable, so you can land on a dime. Now, an achievement like this doesn't just happen in a bubble. What this does is it catapults India's special forces capabilities into a very, very exclusive international club. Take a look at this. This chart really puts things into perspective. With a 32,000 foot operational ceiling, India's capability is now right up there with the best in the world. They've surpassed many established military powers and are now in a very, very elite group. This is a major leap onto the world stage. All right, so the tech is impressive. The global standing is clear. But what does this actually mean on the battlefield? What's the so what? This, my friends, is where it gets truly game-changing. Just look at this contrast here. The old way of getting troops in was loud, it was dangerous. Planes had to fly low and close to the target, which, you know, makes them easy targets. This new ha-ho capability, it's the exact opposite. It's the art of the ghost soldier. You drop from so high and so far away that by the time you open your chute, you're just a tiny, silent speck in the sky, virtually impossible for enemy radar to pick up. And just how far can they glide? We are talking about an operational range of 30 to 40 kilometers. Think about that for a second. A soldier can jump from a plane flying safely within friendly airspace and then silently glide deep into enemy territory, landing exactly where they need to be. So what kind of new missions does this unlock? Well, all of a sudden, special forces can operate in super treacherous, high-altitude places like the Himalayas. They can literally appear out of nowhere to cut supply lines, take out enemy radar, or capture key assets, all before the main battle even starts. And because the whole system is designed for safe landings, they can carry heavier gear, making them even more effective when they touch down. This quote from the source material just sums it up perfectly. With this kind of technology, special forces operators aren't just soldiers anymore. They become living, thinking, human precision-guided munitions, delivered with surgical accuracy to achieve a strategic goal. And all of this leaves us with a really fascinating, 
and maybe a little unsettling thought. In an age where a soldier can just silently glide across a border from the edge of space, it forces us to completely rethink what a secure border even is. If your enemy can just appear 30 kilometers inside your territory without a single plane crossing the line, then your whole idea of air defense and ground surveillance has to change. It's a whole new dimension of warfare.